Hi, so this is uh, Chris and Jason at the Centre for Computing History and Chris has um, wonderfully got our Data Dynamics 390 um, which I think is actually just a rebadged um, ASR33 teleprinter um, kind of basically working, we've only had it working about 12 seconds so you're getting to see it first um, so Chris, tell us about it Okay, so what we're going to use it for is to see if the punch is working so we've got some paper tape that's already punched um, we're going to ask it to read that tape and see if it'll punch some new tape for us just to check that part of the mechanism. So are you ready? Yeah, yeah. The button is start. And it's certainly reading the tape. And now it's making copies of the tape. So this tape on, on the tape is final data? Yeah, that, so, that tape is... Is this, is this off the Elliot? This is off the Elliot, okay, right, yeah. So, um, so, so this, is, this is how you make a copy of, of any tapes that you wish to have copies of, because if you were reading um, paper tape using a mechanical method, they will wear out after a while, so you would have to make copies of your, your tape. Yeah. Uh, if you can secure. But it's making the printer do silly things. Yeah, because obviously it's not it. Interpret, yeah. binary codes. So that's yeah, why you keep one. hearing the bell. The bell is probably a character code 7. Um, where it's got characters that can print it is, but otherwise you've got some random movement there from the printer. We're just checking the mechanism to make sure the paper tape reader is working, the mechanics are working, and so far so good. Fantastic. <laughs> and that's it. That's all that. Look at that. So can we uh, can we get the hood up on this thing? Yeah, let's just pull that back a little. Here's the units. We've got these two standard um, typewriter ribbon spools on it there. It's all of the uh, tape as it was, was supplied with. It's an amazing, I don't know if you can see it, mechanics and things there. Uh, uh, it's a very yeah, it makes it quite mechanical like machine. <laughs> yeah, there's a big motor just under here. Uh, there's a huge motor that you can hear running in the background. And all of the so all the keyboard is mechanical operations that make that little head there. So this is kind of a it's a kind of drum with the, the, the characters on it. I can see it in detail there. Um, so it's not a golf ball or a dot matrix or anything like that. Um, it's kind of this little drum head. But this it's is all a mechanical the, operation that makes the, the, the key presses. For that the drum head has got to rotate to the right position, and then it's got to be moved up and down according to what character before it strikes through the ribbon. Mm -hmm. And all that's achieved by mechanics. There's not a step of motor in sight. This, this thing over here, yeah. I think, I can't, that, is that the, I think that's the bell. Um, well, it, it, over that side, oh, no, when, no, no. when this returns, when you get a, a, a carried return, that will buffer. It's, oh, it's, like, a, it's like a shock absorber. Yeah. So as it hits the end, it's... Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. I thought I could see it like a little hammer that yeah. hit it. Because it's, it's a physical mechanical bell sound, uh, which is quite nice. You look in the ASCII codes in the seventies, the the bell. Then this thing, it, it really is an actual bell, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, you can see just about the end there. That's the motor, the end of the motor running. Um, yeah, very very mechanical, beautiful. And it's been powered off quite a few years. Yeah, this is just, we just turned it on today um, and um, she ups and runs, which is fantastic. Just so I think that we just had to find out in 20 volts, that's all. So. Yeah, this is, <laughs> it should um, say that this is sort of a military um, machine, so uh, it was configured for 120 volts, um, as is uh, co uh, common on the sort of decks of warships and things. Um, so yeah, we've had to drop the, the mains voltage to 120 to get it to work, but that was of uh, little consequence. Um, I think the things that it's not doing is actually more us not understanding it right now, and we need to uh, do a bit of RTFM. Yeah, it's, um, got, it's got several interface cards, how it would be connected to a computer and so on, so we need to understand those, how they work, and to make sure we can switch it to local mode, so, it yeah. can, so we can type on it, produce tapes and so on. Brilliant. Can, it, can we run it without the, without the lid on?
moment. Um, and sometimes you get the character code to go backwards. But not often. We need to punch some tape with some acid data on it. It's a load of even. There you go. So we've got it talking rubbish. The <laughs> next task is... We taught it that. Get it, <laughs> is to get some sense out of it. <laughs> Brilliant. Good, excellent. Yeah, so we'll have this on display at the uh, Centre for Computing History. Um, hopefully, reasonably soon. A little bit of work to do yet. Um, but yeah, there you go. So that's the uh, data dynamics. Um, we'll bring the lid down on it. Mm -hmm. And we'll finish on a shot of the beautiful machine. There you go. So that's data dynamics 390. That's what I need is the front panel. Um, AKA the ASR33. Um, and uh, yeah, at the Centre for Computing History, we'll have it up and working and doing amazing things soon. Thanks for watching.